Good evening, Click fans, and welcome back to Orlando, Florida. We are here for our last segment of Click Connect. It has been an awesome day. I feel smarter than when I woke up today. My name is Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be joined by John Furrier. John, what a show we've had. It's been a great show. I've been, it's, it's very um, action-packed, but you don't feel it. It's a really well-designed show. The story's popping on all cylinders. Gen of AI is actually changing the game. And, and uh, Click, we have the CEO on, and a customer, and a partner, and we're going to hear, because when you, you get your data right, AI is magical, and I think this is what we're going to start to see, all new experiences coming online, yeah. and then new expectations following, so it should be a great next five years, and, and just the beginning, scratching the surface, so I'm super excited, looking forward to this segment. Yes, I know, it's like we saved the best for last this time. Hello, Mike and Servant, nice, thank you for being here, nice of you to join us. My pleasure. It's a pleasure being here. It's so exciting. Mike, I got to start with you, this is your show, thank you for having us here. What is it like to see 2,100 people that you know. Yeah, well, <laughs> look, it's my show, but as you've seen, it takes a village to put on a show like this. But yeah. we, we couldn't be more pleased. I mean, you've been sitting here all day, so you see the energy, the excitement. We're oversubscribed. You know, we have more people come than we expected, which is always a great oh, thing. Oh, that's amazing. I hadn't yeah. heard that little nugget yeah, yet today. Yeah, we're really, really oh, happy. Oh, that's awesome. And, um, and look, the feedback from the event, uh, the keynotes, and uh, all the product stuff has been over the top terrific. So day one, so far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good. So Ron, exciting day for you too, I imagine. What's it like? How's your show been? Absolutely, I think it was great. I think we started the day with some great keynotes and great updates on the products. I was very, very excited about uh, looking at Click's AI strategy and I think I got some very interesting nuggets out of that. So it has been great. Here you are, a proper partner, and you're still taking notes in the keynote. I love Absolutely. to hear that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's a learning conference. Mike, I want you to lay out, and I'd love to get the commentary from the, um, from the, from the front lines as well. What is the update on, on Click? Give us a quick you know, minute, set up the context. A lot of new, new things in the fold. Mm -hmm. We've heard other execs on your team. I've been in the business for decades, finally it's the moment. Yep. We have all the puzzle pieces from a customer. So yep. it's feeling like things are here clear line of sight on all the key puzzle pieces for the, for the, for the foundation for data, lay out the click story and then we'll get the reaction. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll, look, I'll be quick because you brought it, you brought it. It's, it's this moment, right? We've been waiting for it. I was like looking at your earrings, like the cube, Rubik's Cube's finally in place, the pieces of the puzzle. Um, we've been getting ready for this moment for years, right? This was this Gen AI moment where we finally crossed the chasm and said, okay, now we can actually make this stuff productive, useful, and so what, this is what we've been building, and our, the, the products that we brought together, our data integration technology, now our data governance technology, analytics, and then automation, that chain has come to fruition. Yeah. That's what we showed the audience today, and clearly, they liked it. They really, uh, cheers they really liked and it. hoops yeah. and hollers. Yeah. I have Absolutely. to say, I think it was one of the more vivacious keynotes I have heard in terms of just the pure, real enthusiasm yeah. Yeah. that your community has for the product. Yeah, and because they've been waiting, amazing. right? We talked about yeah. this being yeah. an yeah. inflection point. It's like there's always been this, this promise of AI, but also this fear yeah. of AI, right? It's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's got all this potential, but got to be careful. And what we showed today was how you can deploy AI productively and responsibly, right? Yeah. And that, to, that, that, that's the key. Yeah, and the thing is, give you guys props, we've been talking on theCUBE for the past year around how the data market's going to look like a cloud market. If you remember the cloud, born in the cloud days, with SaaS kind of hit the inflection point there, it was a magical moment. Here with data, you're hearing things on stage. First conference I've ever been to, heard, and I go to all the conferences, hmm. I've never heard data supply chain yeah. on the keynote, mainstream. So you, that you're seeing signs that data, not just lineage, but like, that's a security conversation, software right. supply chain. Where's it come from? So you start to see data look a lot like cloud native. Born in right. the data world, we're now in a whole nother level spot. You are in this world of the customer. This is kind of like a sh platform shift. We heard that from the analysts as well. We're seeing the same thing. Again, I've never heard data supply chain. That tells me there's a developer market. That tells me there's tracking around secure, security, role of data. I mean, this is, this is the first time I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, well look, I mean, you usually hear it in the context of security and things like that, and certainly protecting your data is good, but protecting bad data is no fun either, right? <laughs> so, as we start to reach for the promise of AI, this data quality discussion has really come to the forefront. And in my keynote today, the, the one big message I, I left people is you got to do the work. Mm -hmm. Like, you cannot just plug in AI and expect it to happen. You got to do the work. And you take companies like Penske, who've done that yeah. work first, laid the foundation, and now they're achieving the value from it. Uh, What's absolutely. your reaction to all this? Yeah, I want to I actually just 
lay of the land since we got the vision on click. How is Penske been approaching AI in general? And then dive in there, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned in the keynote, we have been operationalizing predictive and prescriptive AI for almost a decade. But generative AI is a different ball game altogether. I think it is going to fundamentally transform how we build, exp uh, build applications, how we expose data or insights to the end users. Um, I think in last 50 years, majority of the business applications which were built, they were built to receive inputs from keyboard and a mouse. And when touch screen and mobile came, we saw how we all had to adjust to swipe left, swipe right. I think generative AI is going to cause a much, much bigger disruption, much bigger shift. So in my opinion, I think we will see a majority of the business applications getting disrupted at some point of time because generative AI is fundamentally changing not just the interaction with information, but the generation of information itself. Yes. Yes, we are looking at it with a lot of excitement. Yeah. I How has it changed your data practice? Because again, we're hearing yeah. a lot about foundations, setting that data foundation, doing the work, which is definitely totally true there. But then now I got, okay, I did things the old way, now there's a new way. So we, we started to see the industry clear lines of sight between old way and new way. What are some of those new ways and old way? What goes away and what's replaced? Hmm. Can you share your view of, because something's got to change and this is disruptive. It's yeah. a disruptive enabler. Yeah, yeah, so let me share what will not go away. I think as Mike mentioned this morning, garbage in, garbage out, mm -hmm. it's not going away. So we mm. have to be very, very careful <laughs> about data foundations. We have to get data right, data quality right. Uh, so that's very, very important. Now what is going to change is the way we have been thinking about uh, business and technology capabilities. I think AI is not a once and done thing. In fact, Building a model or coming up with a model is just the start, it's not the end, yeah, right. right? There's a lot of care and feeding which needs to happen when we are operationalizing AI. So I think the way we think about AI investments, that has to fundamentally shift. And as far as Click is concerned, uh, I mean, we have significant investments in Click today. So if we can uh, generate insights using Gen AI capabilities right then and there, I think that is going to expedite AI value delivery for my business partners, and that is why I'm so excited about Click's AI strategy. Yeah. What great. kind of solutions do you, and I, I think, I, I don't want to misquote it, so I'm hoping you can repeat it, but I heard a, a, an interesting stat about keeping trucks that were going to break down off the road so that you didn't bump into that problem. Can you share that nugget with us? Yes, absolutely. So. Um, Think about it like this, before we had an AI solution, uh, a truck is going on on the road and a failure may occur. And in the past, there was just no way for us to uh, proactively do something about it. Now with AI, we can predict when a truck is going to fail. And in number of cases, we can actually intervene. Um, we can call uh, the driver um, or reach out to the customer and say, well, here is our next location. It's 50 miles away. How about you take a break while we take a look at the truck? Mm -hmm. And um, I'll quote an instance that in certain, uh, in, in the day we went live at 6 a.m., there was a fault code which was generated by 8.30 a.m. That truck was back on the road because we were able to quickly respond to that uh, failure proactively. And wow. last year alone, we prevented 90,000 trucks from failing on the side of the road. 90,000. 90,000, that's a 90, big number. 90,000 yeah. physical hardware edge devices, Absolutely. essentially, is yeah. how we can look at them. I yeah. mean, if it, it, loosely, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that the cost is savings impressive. alone must be huge. Exactly. Absolutely, cost savings are significant, but on top of that, what's most important is the customer experience, yeah. because we are avoiding downtime. costly and time-consuming downtimes for our customers. Yeah, yeah. delay. Yeah. Right. And customer satisfaction. Absolutely. Right, yeah. The yeah. killer app is time with AI, right? Absolutely. That's our time. <laughs> right, well, and we, and we talk about, we, we, you know, the hype's obviously having its moment right now, but, but 90,000 vehicles not breaking down is a real thing. Yeah. That's, not, a that's real not hype, thing. that's, that's it, dollars in the pocket. Absolutely. And, yeah. and smiles absolutely. on faces. Speaking of file, smiles, 93% customer retention for you guys? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That is wild. 
It is wild. It is wild. It's a statistic we're super proud of. I can't believe that. Yeah. I mean, I can believe it because I've met a lot of them today. Yeah. And it's been incredibly yeah. impressive, <laughs> you included. But I, I think that really speaks to the passion and the, and the value you're, you're driving there. What is it like for you when you hear stories like Penske's experience? Yeah, look, it, it, I, I'm super lucky because I'm one of those people who loves coming to work every day, right? And it is mm. the energy you get from customers, you know? And, and it's always been true. This is not something new to Mike Capone, CEO of Click, who's been here six years. Um, one of the reasons I joined Click uh, was I talked to customers before I even joined. And what they all said is, you guys have a great product. And again, this, this philosophy of um, partnership, this philosophy of, you know, we, we go with you on your journey. Mm -hmm. We don't impose things on you. Super important, and, that's, and that, that's what we try to preach. And when I hear customers stand up, not, not just say it, but stand up in front of thousands of people and say it um, proudly, that, you know, what, could, what better could a CEO ask for? Right. right? But, you know, and as I mentioned, I was a CIO. I was in Sarvant's chair at one point, yeah. and I knew the kind of companies I wanted to do business with. And they had a certain DNA and a certain culture, a certain approach, and so when I joined and with my leadership team, we said, let's be that company. Let's be the company that customers want to do business with, not a necessary evil, you know? Talk about the roles inside your customer base, uh, and if you can get some data points as well, uh, share that. The, the data market, if you connect the dots, okay, the, the, this continues, Gen of AI will hit, we know it's coming, everyone's preparing for it. It changes your game, mm -hmm. Click's game, from analytics to just all apps. I mean, mm -hmm. it's now everything. So the data's in all the applications. Data right. is the product, and there's software wrapped around it. That's right. So if you look at it that way, Answers is just an app. Okay, of a data foundation with middleware, AKA data and software. So if data is now programmable, data supply chains, got this cloud feel to it. I'm going, yeah. going in this direction. Data yeah. developers are coming. What's your, what's your reaction to that? No, I mean. You're uh, smiling. Uh, <laughs> yes, I mean, um, so, so data, and we are going to see more and more digital products which are primarily data driven. Uh, that's exactly where it is headed. Uh, to your comment about uh, click answers, where Gen AI is being made available as part of this platform, I think what we will see is embedded AI. Right. I think we will see exped expediting of that trend because it's no longer a, a one app which you need to go to to do something. I think it is going to become pervasive and it will become yeah. part and parcel of each and every business application at some point of time. And you mentioned earlier, pre-Gen AI, you already had the data practice. You're doing predictive, prescriptive, machine learning, it's unsupervised, supervised, all, that's hardcore, okay, get that. Absolutely. Now, if you take that forward, what gets easier about leveraging that capability in Gen AI? Is it the embedded AI? Is it the agents that are going to come out of it? If you help 90,000 trucks get better, mm -hmm. what are you going to do for employees? I think, I, mean, I think it's all of that. So the first benefit we are going to see is to a knowledge worker. Mm -hmm. For example, the search is fundamentally changing because of generative AI. So we will have intelligent search. In the past, if you remember, even if you'll go to Google, you'll search something, you'll get like, 10 pages, yeah. and then you had to figure out what's meaningful, what's not. Now, generative AI is going to change that. Now, what you will get is some very actionable information, and you can act on it immediately. So I think in search is one area which is getting disrupted, and it will enhance employee productivity. I think call centers are another area where we will see significant productivity yeah. improvements and efficiency improvements because of Gen AI, because uh, the response is much more human-like compared to what we used to see with either smaller models or traditional AI. Yeah, I, I think we've seen a lot of evolution in that in that space. Speaking of, how are you continuing, you know, you've taken notes in the keynote, you mentioned, you're, you're, yes. you're, 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 you're learning today. I was trying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had a, a lot, a lot going on He's this in point. the keynote, he's taking notes, yeah, no, he's in the keynote. Yeah, no, I was going to say, he's low-key, like, he's on a master, hand, he's like a teacher and the student in one time. Yeah, yeah but, no, but that's, well, that's great. With that in, <laughs> with that in mind, how are you hoping to continue this momentum and the success that you've already seen implementing this at scale in, in the next year or two? Absolutely, so we, earlier we, we were more uh, use case focused, but now our focus is on having a groundswell on AI. So self-service AI is a significant part of our data strategy. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about 170 click developers. Mm. Um, our focus now is on converting our analysts into AI developers. 
And that's where I think the significant impact, uh, significant positive impact is going to come from because AI is going to become pervasive as a result of that. So as I said, I mean, self-service AI is in the next big opportunity for us. And I do believe that Click has a role there because majority of our data is already sitting in a Click engine. So. I got to ask you guys something, if you don't mind commenting. As, as you said, we see the apps are already out there, the workloads. Take, like, take your normal application, it's end-to-end. -end. You guys talk about end-to-end -end solutions all the time. But now you've got an end-to-end -end application that's pre-gen AI. Mm -hmm. It's scope, you know what it does, mm -hmm. it has a utility and value. Now to make that gen AI enabled, right. the data model changes a bit. So lots going on under the covers. So now the workflow's known end-to-end -end with data that's proprietary. That is the IP of a company. Right, so we're seeing yeah. the workflow, the workflows, yeah. and data are the new IP. How, one, do you believe that? And two, how do you retrofit that workload? It could be a banking app, it could be your app, it yeah. could be a new app. Yeah, so my, my impression, and uh, look, this field is still evolving, so there is a lot yeah. to be seen, but I don't think the business process is going to change a little bit. I think there is a potential that it may get disrupted or significantly mm -hmm. transformed and I think we still have to figure out that if we, using Gen AI, we can fundamentally transform our business process, how will we deliver the new experience? How, how will the end user experience going to shift? How will the customer experience going to shift? So the way application gets designed, I think that process itself may get transformed. And, and it'll, be more, it'll be data hungry, it, right? So, yes. I mean, AI is going to be very compute intensive. Obviously, GPUs, XPUs are, are coming out. So, Mike, what's your, what's your, do you agree with this? Because the, the, the process mm -hmm. might not change, but how the, it's constructed might and the amount of data involved mm -hmm. and how data interacts maybe changes. Th that's absolutely true. I mean, it's, it's tough to paint in sort of broad generalizations. I think that's the danger of the yeah. whole Gen AI craze is like people are making yeah. extreme statements. I think it's very case by case, very situational. Yeah. I think we're going to be able to very quickly layer Gen AI into existing kind of data pipelines and applications. We're doing that today with ClickSense applications or analytics application mm -hmm. and get value right away. I think there are other cases where we're going to need to rebuild the data pipelines with AI in mind and figure out how we get our data ready and, and develop actually all new kind of platforms and, and use cases and things like that. Um, so I think it's going to be quite, quite situational. Um, the compute thing is, is really interesting. That, yeah. you know, as a, that does keep me awake at night, like how yeah. much the power consumption, and yeah. you know, we're going to have to, as an industry, find ways to optimize. And you know, one thing I, I coach our customers on is um, the, the, the data is actually showing, or the science is showing, that you know, more isn't always better, right? Yeah. Sometimes everyone's like, more data is better, more data is better AI. It's actually not true. More isn't always better, sometimes better is better. Better is right? better, yeah, 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 yeah. Like having smaller, Lots better, yeah. Data yeah. sets, training, going into your, uh, training your, your algorithms mm -hmm. can be better. And so I encourage customers just to think about that before they just they start throwing everything but the kitchen sink into their models. Yeah. Yeah. And, you got, and you guys have been also talking about trust. I think one of the things that we learned today was, from, from your team is, it, risk management and product management are now disciplines that are at the nexus of all the situational decisions. Do you go specialty models, stay small? Yeah. Do you want to take mm -hmm. existing data and experiment, then double down? So these yeah. classic risk management decisions, you're shaking your head, you see the yeah, same thing? Yeah, now. absolutely. I think what you're just describing is uh, where the vision of AI mesh comes in, mm -hmm. where you are looking at different aspects of a decision and there are different models feeding into that. So definitely, I mean, that's the next frontier. Yeah, and you saw, I think you even had them on earlier, the, our AI council, so yeah. one of the things that we've done is put together a council of experts from outside of yeah. corporate America, you know, outside of uh, global corporate work, and they're, they're from academia, they're from government, yeah. um, geopolitical advisors, and it really is about getting that foundation right, because you really do, in order to get this right, you got to yeah. start from the beginning, and as you start building these things, kind of build privacy, yeah. security, yeah. ethics into your process and, and your modeling. Uh, you're talking about the AI council segments, go check it out, it's worth watching for the folks watching here. One thing that jumped out at me, Dr. Michael uh, Bornstein talked about was, he does the deep mind, he also worked at Twitter Graph, he's big time neural network guy, so yeah. the, you know, we were kind of riffing, we do kind of outlandish things on the queue, I will just say that, <laughs> preface this, this is a crazy statement, but you know, we've been speculating that there's an operating model emerging, not yet known. If you take neural networks and knowledge graphs together, what runs those? So the, the question that we're asking is, what does that look like? Is there yet another operating model behind what we're scratching the surface now? If the graphs are proliferating, 
if there's now data has to be highly available. Is it highly available or highly high availability? So what? Did you get that question? You know, <laughs> no, you know, can you, can you it's a, that question? Yeah. So in the storage world, highly available yeah. and high availability have two definitional meetings. Yeah. One's low latency at the edge. Uh, yeah, so okay. So data, data at latency is an issue. Yeah. You've got all kinds of synthetic data. So you know, the speculation is, what runs this? <laughs> what, what operating system runs this? It might have been one that's invented, yeah. Look, I, I'm not going to try to get even on the same plane as Michael in terms of these conversations. He is a genius. Um, and that's why we have him in yeah. advising us. Yeah. That's, oh, I think. <laughs> I can imagine we could go down a big yeah, rabbit that's hole. A rabbit. Yeah, yeah, we could go no. down a very Let's not go there. Yeah, yeah. We'll save that for later. Part of being a good CEO is knowing when you start getting over your head and you just like, <laughs> change the subject. Yeah. Well, actually, where yeah. I was going is, is, kind of, is kind of along those lines. I want to ask you both this question, but Mike, I'm going to start with you. Everything's moving real fast. Yep. Everybody wants to be building things. I'm sure everyone wants solutions. How are you determining your product roadmap? How are you deciding when to make these acquisitions? I mean, obviously made some very strategic and smart acquisitions earlier this year that have led us to where we are now. But I'm curious, what, what are those conversations like? How are you navigating it? What's your advice to other leaders doing that? Look, the number one asset we have is our customers. You know, here, like we have, we've got hundreds of one-on-ones with our customers right now. So while you see everybody checking out our solutions, we're secretly also interrogating all of our customers Mm -hmm. about what they want and what, where they see the world going. We have our executive advisory board. We have a set of premier customers that are actually um, you know, really, really deep in their fields and they're advising us as well. We have the AI council, et cetera. Um, yeah. And then you know, we've got great product managers who are constantly doing research. Um, things are moving fast, um, but the, the trick is actually not to be fooled by the, the flavor of the moment, yeah. right? Because like, mm -hmm. if, you know, if we just started building stuff a year ago when this Gen AI craze was happening, We'd just be plugging LMs and ChatGPT into everything, and you know, it wouldn't create a lot of value, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. we would have satisfied the hype. And so, yeah. what we try to do is be agile and quick, but thoughtful. Yeah. And real problems. Yeah, agile, yeah and real problems. Like, yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. that. So, so, is it the same for you? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, so if I could, even though we decided not to go there, but I would like to address okay. your go, question. Go, right? yes. Uh, we just I, I decided. decided. We just decided. Yeah. 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 Let's go. So, so this, this, this is what happened, right? Um, when AI capability first became available, people were like, oh, we need a data lake so that I can bring all the data together and then run AI on it. So there was a race to the right. Yeah. But because of edge computing now, right, there is a race to the left. And yeah. a lot of people are confused. Yeah. Am I racing to the right? Am yeah. I racing to the le left? And I think that's where the questions around latency, around decision making are going to be very, very important. And this decision making that am I racing to the right or am I racing to the left needs to be done on a case by case basis. Mm, yeah, and latency yeah. or decision making will play a very, very big role. And what came out but, of the AI yeah. council on that point was is that people don't yet know what to do if that scenario happens. That is correct. They're comfortable There's, with centralization. Yes. Mm -hmm. They know what it's like. I can interrogate a data set. That's an old school yes, yes. concept yeah, in data yeah. analytics. But okay, federated data, what do right. I do? I've never had the chance yeah. to, to do that. So these new generational problems our opportunities. So again, this right. is what we're trying to understand. And again, back to what the council said was, ignore the hype and focus on real problems. Focus Absolutely. on real I mean, problems. You have a North Star vision, but mm -hmm. like, don't go over, get over your skis. So that's my word, they didn't say totally. that. But, but, but they're right. saying don't yeah. go too far. Well, focus that. on getting trucks not to break down on the road. Yeah, there you yeah. Go. No, that's right. Yeah. That's right. No, I think, I think that's great. All right. right. So talk about the relationship with you guys, customer. What about Click? Talk about how you guys are innovating together, because obviously you guys have a great partnership. What's the key to success? Is it the foundation? We'll go talk about your scenario. I mean, key to success has been um, that any time we have a challenge or we need uh, a strategic conversation, Click's team is always available. So I think at the end of the day, it's all about just having a great relationship, having this human-to-human -human interaction. And I think the two organizations have been just very, very good at that. So I think that's what I would uh, say. Mike. Yeah, and it's customers' willingness to speak up and give us feedback. You know, it's 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 never personal, right? It's always <laughs> yeah. just it's always just business, and you got to make time for those those conversations. And you also have to credit you know when customers talk to you about things, um, they do it kind of expect you to like listen and then respond and do something, right? So you have to keep credible, like yeah, because you know, a lot well, a lot trust. of yeah a lot of companies will say oh yeah we listen to our customers, but they really don't. They, it's like a one way thing. Um, but we try to have a governance model where we actually have a, this feedback loop where we're we're, we're delivering. We don't, you don't get everything you want, right? No. But, but you do get, you know, you do get a lot. And then yeah. when we can't do it, we just say, hey, we can't do it or we're going to do it this way. Um, but it's, yeah. it's, it's very symbiotic and uh, quite frankly, it's fun. Why you got high retention rates. So what about the best practices? How would your advice would you give someone 
who wants to lean in, into the AI wave the right way, the generative AI wave, what's the best practice? What would, what's the pro tip from, you, from your group? Yeah, so a couple of things. One, uh, focus on data. We have mm -hmm. to get the data right, because garbage in, garbage out, as Mike said this morning, yeah. is absolutely true. So focus on data, that's number one. Second, um, taking a federated approach is definitely the best way, because if you will centralize very heavily, you will alienate some people. And if it is heavily distributed, then we are not going to get the economies of the scale, we are not leveraging the architecture. So I think it's finding that sweet spot, and I think the right answer is going to vary from company to company. I don't think there is a magic bullet, to be very honest. So depending upon the type of business you are in, the kind of customer pressures you deal with, I think the business capabilities need to drive the technical capabilities, mm -hmm. the technical architecture around AI implementation. So that is what I would recommend, that uh, keep, keep your eye on the vision, the, the, the big goal, but how will exactly how will exactly we execute? And I think that's that's very very important. It is important. All right, last question for you, very insightful gentlemen, because we'll use this for our promo for the next Click Connect next okay. year. What do you hope to be able to say when you sit down with us in 2025 that you can't quite say yet today? I'll start with you, Mike. Okay. Um, look, I think. Um, you know, we are, we're at this inflection point. We talked about this earlier about, okay, you got to do the work. And what, what I'm going to say next year, we're gonna have, I'm going to have Sarant back on stage for sure and a few <laughs> other customers talking about, they heard us when we were on stage saying, you know what, we need to focus on the data quality, data work, and now we got the outcome. And you know, that's going to be, we did as well as these guys already did with their 90,000 trucks and preventive maintenance. Um, and Sarant's going to have a better story about what he did with his business. Yeah. And what do you think that story is going to be in a year? I think I think what Mike said makes perfect sense from my business's perspective because if we will have some use cases where we have uh, Gen AI implemented within Click, uh, and if we can productionize those, I think that's success. Yeah. I think that, that that would be a very good story. I think it would be a good story, and we look forward to hopefully having it right here back on the Cube and, and in that keynote next year. So, Mike, thank you both so much for being thank here. You, this is you. great, and thanks for having such a wonderful community who has embraced this and so many fabulous guests just like you. It's been <laughs> awesome. John, thanks for spending the day here with me in Orlando. Yeah, great, great team. It really has been great and thank all of you fabulous producers back there that I'm looking at for doing mm -hmm. such a fantastic job. And everyone on the Click team who showed up today, we've had just a power pack lineup. I really do feel smarter than when I woke up this morning. Yeah. And thank <laughs> all of you, our fabulous Cube community, for tuning in to Click Connect here in Orlando, Florida. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news. <laughs>